Happy Monday, Discovery Learners! It is I, Teacher Liz, here with another episode of Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. Today, I'll be sharing with you some cool observances, interesting history, cool facts, cool animals, and plants. And let's not forget, there's a new Spanish word to learn and a new place to explore this week. And also, don't forget to log in every day to the live Zoom sessions provided every day by the Discovery Educational Team. Now let's not delay any further. Let's start the show. And now for today's observances. Hello and happy Monday, Discovery Learners. It is I, Teacher Liz, here bringing you today's observances for Monday, December 13th, 2021. Our first observance is National Cocoa Day. December 13th ushers in a celebration worthy of the winter holidays with National Cocoa Day. What better way to warm up after a cold day outside? We make hot cocoa with cocoa powder, heated milk or water, and sugar. However, Americans often use hot chocolate and hot cocoa interchangeably, sometimes causing a bit of confusion. There is a huge difference between the two beverages. We make hot chocolate by using ground chocolate containing cocoa butter. We mix it with hot milk and it is drinking chocolate. Hot chocolate is also known as drinking chocolate. Hmm, I never called it that. However, hot cocoa is made from cocoa powder. We produce a paste called chocolate liqueur. Through the fermentation, drying, roasting, and grinding process of cocoa beans, through another method, they separate cocoa butter, leaving cocoa powder. They use this cocoa powder to make hot cocoa. The ending result has very little fat and calories. Guess what time it is? It's time for today's interesting fact. Did you know? The Mayans are credited with creating the first chocolate beverage around 2,000 years ago? It's true! Culturally, cocoa became an essential part of the Aztec civilization by 1400 AD. After the drink found its way from Mexico through the New World, Europeans popularized the chocolate drink. However, it has undergone multiple changes since then. Until the 19th century, drinkers used hot chocolate medicinally to treat ailments such as stomach diseases. In the United States, an instant form of drink is popular, mixed with hot water or milk. The packet contains mostly cocoa powder, sugar, and dry milk. We also like to add marshmallows or whipped cream. It makes the chocolate drink creamier and sweeter. So how do we observe National Cocoa Day? Host a cocoa bar after a day outdoors in the snow or in the cold weather. A cup of hot cocoa after sledding or building a snowman warms us right up. When we gather around the table and sip our steaming cup, let the conversations begin. Or you could try some of these delicious topping suggestions like whipped cream, cinnamon and sugar, marshmallows, candy canes, caramel, toffee bits, and even coconut. Maybe some butterscotch candies crushed up. Maybe candy sprinkles or cinnamon cereal. You could even add chopped nuts. Go ahead and try them all. It's hot cocoa day. So do you like hot cocoa? If you do, do you like to top it off with anything? I for one like adding marshmallows in it. What do you like to add? Go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. Our next observance for today is National Violin Day. Honoring an instrument also known as a little fiddle, National Violin Day on December 13th celebrates the bow string instrument loved around the world. By drawing the bow across the strings, the violinist manipulates the sound in several ways. A violinist uses numerous bow techniques to master the violin. The strokes dedicate not only notes, but the quality of the note played. While we associate the violin with classical music, it easily crosses genres. For instance, the violinist demonstrates the versatility of the violin by extensive use in Baroque music, jazz, folk music, rock and roll, and soft rock. Did you know? The word violin comes from the medieval Latin word vitula, which means stringed instrument. Interesting. Although having ancient origins, violin makers developed the most of the violin's modern characteristics in Italy during the 16th century. Further modifications formed in the 18th and 19th centuries. 
So, how do we observe National Violin Day? Well, the holiday season offers an excellent time to listen to the violin in concert. Whether you decide to attend a holiday presentation or get tickets to the local chamber orchestra, the violin will certainly be a part of the performance. Other ways to enjoy the holiday include listen to some orchestra concerts online, or maybe add some violin music to your favorite playlist. Ooh, that sounds like a good idea. So do you like violin music? Or have you ever played the violin before? Go ahead and share your story in the comment section below. Another observance for today is National Day of the Horse. National Day of the Horse on December 13th encourages people of the United States to be mindful of the contribution of horses to the economy, history, and the character of the United States. The domestic horse we know today, also known as Equus, was introduced to North America by Spanish explorers. Escaped horses eventually spread across the American Great Plains. In North America, the legendary horse is embedded in our culture and runs deep into the roots of our history. Our indebtedness to the horse grew too. While a few people see the horse as much more than a recreational animal today, they still serve on working ranches. As a therapy animal, horses relieve symptoms of PTSD, anxiety, and other disorders. Long past their age as a plow horse or part of the cavalry, they continue connecting to humans, and we continue to rely on them. So how do we observe Day of the Horse? Celebrate the horse and their contributions to North America. Explore their history and learn more about how the horse continues to play a vital role in North America today. You could also read your favorite books about horses. Maybe draw, color, or paint a picture of a horse. Or if you live near stables, maybe visit your local horses. Whatever you decide to do, be sure to let us know in the comment section below. Go ahead and comment down below and let us know how you plan on observing, well, these observances for today. On this day in history, Today, in 1989, the film Driving Miss Daisy, directed by Bruce Beersford, starring Morgan Freeman and Jessica Tandy, is released. Driving Miss Daisy is a 1989 American comedy drama film directed by Bruce Beersford and written by Alfred Unry, based on Unry's 1987 play of the same name. The film stars Jessica Tandy, Morgan Freeman, and Dan Aykroyd. Morgan Freeman reprises his role as the original off-Broadway production. The story defines Daisy and her point of view through the network of relationships and emotions by focusing on her home life, synagogue, friends, family, fears, and concerns over a 25-year period. Driving Miss Daisy was a critical and commercial success upon its release and at the 62nd Academy Awards receiving 9 nominations and winning 4 Oscars for Best Picture, Best Actress, Best Makeup, and Best Adapted Screenplay. As of 2021, it is the most recent PG-rated film to have won Best Picture. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know what you think of today's historical events. Notable Figures Born on This Day Our first notable figure born today is Dick Van Dyke. Born December 13, 1925 in West Plains, Missouri, this American actor is a star of The Dick Van Dyke Show and Diagnosis Murder, who won a SAG Life Achievement Award in 2012 and a Disney Legend Award in 1998. He starred in the 1964 classic Mary Poppins and was also cast in the film sequel Mary Poppins Returns, which was slated for a 2018 release. Before he was famous, he served as a radio announcer in the United States Army Air Corps during World War II and later transferred to the Special Services as an entertainer. He turns 96 years old today. Wow! Happy birthday, Dick Van Dyke! Our next notable figure born today is Christopher Plummer. 
Born December 13, 1929 in Toronto, Canada. This long-time Canadian actor whose prominent roles included Captain Von Trapp in The Sound of Music and his Academy Award-winning portrayal of Hal Fields in the 2010 film Beginners. His other notable credits include The Return of the Pink Panther, Star Trek VI, The Uncovered Century, and The Man Who Would Be King, and the animated film Up. Before he was famous, his role as Mr. Darcy in the high school production of Pride and Prejudice garnered the attention of theater critic Herbert Whitaker. He made his first film debut in the 1958 movie Stage Struck. He unfortunately passed away this year on February 5th at the age of 91. But an interesting piece of trivia to know about him is... He won a number of awards for his role in the 1999 Michael Mann film, The Insider. Happy birthday, Christopher Plummer! Another notable figure born today is Steve Buscemi. Born December 13, 1957 in Brooklyn, New York. This American actor who has starred in films such as Armageddon, The Big Lebowski, Reservoir Dogs, Con Air, Big Fish, Ghost World, Desperado, and Spy Kids 2. He played a prominent role in The Sopranos and starred as Nucky Thompson in Boardwalk Empire. He's even co-starred in numerous Adam Sandler movies. Before he was famous, he worked as a firefighter for four years in New York City and made his acting debut in the late 80s. He turns 64 years old today. Happy birthday, Steve Buscemi. An additional notable figure born today is Jamie Foxx. Born December 13, 1967 in Terrell, Texas. This American Oscar award-winning star of Ray who gained recognition for his role in the TV series In Living Color and starred in Django Unchained. He also appeared in the film Dreamgirls. Collateral, Baby Driver, and The Soloist. In 2018, he starred as Little John in the film Robin Hood. Before he was famous, when he was five years old, he began playing the piano. He broke several school records while playing quarterback in high school. Wow! Today he turns 54 years old. Happy birthday, Jamie Foxx. And our last notable figure born today is... Taylor Swift, born December 13, 1989 in Reading, Pennsylvania. This American singer and songwriter who at the age of 18 became the youngest solo artist to write and record the number one hit record in the US Hot Country Songs chart with the single Our Song. She released her fourth country album Red in 2012 and her first pop album 1989 came out in 2014. In 2017, her sixth album, Reputation, sold over a million copies in just four days. Before she was famous, she was raised in the Presbyterian family and rode her family's quarter horses and a Shetland pony as a child. She began performing in musical theater shows at the age of nine and moved to Nashville when she was 14 years old. She turns 32 years old today. Happy birthday, Taylor Swift. Come along, Discovery Learners, as we explore a new place of the week. This week, we are traveling to the country of Chad. Let's go ahead and learn a little more about this nation's flag. Their flag is vertically striped blue, yellow, and red. The country of Chad used to be colonized by the country of France. And again, just like other countries, this nation's flag was inspired by France's tricolor flag. The dark blue stripe is said to stand for hope and the sky. Yellow is for the sun, and red is for the unity of the nation. The current iteration of Chad's flag has been used since November 1959. Whoa, pretty neat flag you got there, Chad! Now let's learn a little more about this nation. Chad is a landlocked country in North Central Africa. Chad is actually the fifth largest country on the African continent, with most of the northern part of the country lying within the Sahara Desert. Chad is bordered by north by Libya, to the east by Sudan, 
on the south by Central African Republic, and on the west by North Cameroon, Nigeria, and Niger. Chad's official name is the Republic of Chad. Its capital is Ninjamena, and its head of state and government is the president. Its form of government is a transitional military council. The official language spoken in Chad is Arabic, with French as a close second. The current population of Chad is 16,915,000 people. The most popular religions in Chad are Muslim, Protestant, and Roman Catholic, finishing off the top three. Chad has a total area of 495,755 square miles. That's pretty big. Chad is around the same size as the U.S. state of Alaska. The main monetary unit for Chad is the CFA franc, CFAF. 581 CFA francs equals 1 U.S. dollar. The main industries of Chad is oil and agriculture. Its main exports are oil, gold, gum arabic, sesame, cattle, and cotton. Wow, Chad really sounds like an interesting country. Can't wait to teach you more, so be sure you stay tuned all week long as we go over more about Chad here on Ability to Learn. Wow, now that's a really interesting place of the week. Here is the animal of the day. Hey Discovery Learners, today's animal is the manatee. Manatees are large aquatic mammals. There are four species of manatee that live in freshwater and marine waters of western coast of Africa, eastern coast of South America, southern United States, and in the Amazon River. They can be found in shallow, marshy, and coastal areas where the water's temperatures are high. Manatees do not have natural enemies, but their numbers have dropped in the past couple years because of the negative human activity. Increased boating traffic, large numbers of fishermen nets and tackles, in combination with water pollution, kill a lot of manatees each year. They are listed as endangered animals now. That's kind of sad. The manatee resembles walrus or small whales, but they are mostly closely related to elephants. Manatees are also known as sea cows. They are gray or gray-brown in color. A manatee can reach 12 feet in length and weigh more than 1,000 pounds. Despite their gigantic size, they're very elegant and agile in the water. Manatees evolved from land mammals 60 million years ago. Fingernails on their padded-like flippers are evolutionary remnants. Flippers are used in swimming. They enable the propulsion and steering, but they also get used for feeding and holding young manatees. All mammals have seven vertebrae in their neck, while manatees have only six. Because of that, they cannot rotate their head, and if they want to look behind them, they need to turn their whole body around. Manatees spend their whole life in the water. Since they have lungs to breathe the atmospheric air, they need to come to the surface every three to four minutes. The maximum time they can spend underwater is 15 minutes. That's a lot shorter span than most other aquatic mammals. Manatees are also very sensitive to the change in water temperatures. Temperatures below 60 degrees in Fahrenheit can induce pneumonia and lead to death in manatees. Unlike other marine mammals, manatees are strict herbivores. Due to the low nutritional value of vegetation, manatees need to eat 100 pounds of food each day. Manatees gather food using their thick bristle lip. Their teeth, called marching molars, grow consistently throughout their whole lives this specific type of adaptation to their eating habits. Manatees lack an outer ear, but they have a large inner ear which enables them to hear very well. They have small eyes, but their eyesight is excellent. Manatees communicate using a wide range of vocalization sounds, such as chirps, squeaks, whistles, and most communication takes place between the mother cow and the baby calf. Other types of communication between manatees include touching, smelling, tasting, and visual signals like waving, Manatees breed very slowly. Females take six to seven years before they can have babies, and a male has to be 10 years old before he can reproduce. The females only have a baby every four to five years, and their pregnancy lasts 13 months. That's a long time, and the baby manatees will stick with their mother for around two years. In the wild, a manatee can live up to 60 years. That's a long time. So what do you think of today's animal? Is it cute? Is it creepy? Go ahead and let us know what you think in the comment section below. 
the plant of the day. Today's plant is the poinsettia. The poinsettia is a small type of tropical tree. It originates from Mexico and Central America, but it can be found in subtropical areas around the world today. The poinsettia grows in deciduous tropical forests and seasonally dry forests in the wild. This plant is partial to shade. In areas that are forest free, people cultivate poinsettia for ornamental purposes. California is the greatest manufacturer of poinsettia in the world. It produces 50% of it globally and is usually purchased around Christmas time. The wild poinsettia will grow from a large shrub or small tree that can reach up to 10 feet in height. Cultivated varieties are much smaller, only around 2 feet in height. The poinsettia produces dark green leaves with toothed edges. The leaves can reach 3 to 6 inches in length. Poinsettias develop yellow flowers arranged in clusters, surrounded with large colorful brackets, which look like petals. They can be white, yellow, creamy, pink, light orange, and red. The brackets are uniformly colored or marbled and speckled. The poinsettias discard these brackets after pollination. Cultivated varieties of the poinsettia change color of their brackets only after prolonged exposure to darkness, at least 12 hours, and bright light less than 10 hours, for at least 5 days in a row. The plants in the wild require long dark nights and short bright days, during which a 2 month period occurs for the synthesis of pigmentation required to change the color of the leaves. Poinsettias bloom during December. The flowers attract birds and insects responsible for the pollination of the plant. Fruit of the poinsettia is in a capsule. Ripe fruit splits and releases numerous seeds. The poinsettia produces milky sap that is not harmful for people, but it can induce nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea in cats and other household pets. So it's not ideal for a kitty home. People diagnosed with a latex allergy can experience skin reactions after contact with the sap of the poinsettia. The poinsettia is one of the most popular household plants in the US and Canada. Around 34 million plants are sold each year. The 12th of December is National Poinsettia Day, and in the USA it's to honor Dr. Joel Roberts Poinsett, a botanist who introduced the USA to the poinsettia. The poinsettia is known as the flower of the holy night in Mexico and Guatemala because it represents an important part of Christmas celebration. The poinsettia is used in Christmas decoration for churches for centuries. Aztecs used to use the leaves of the poinsettia as a source of reddish purple pigment that was used to dye their fabrics. Sap extracted from the poinsettia was used in the treatment of fever in the past. The poinsettia grows as a perennial plant, meaning it lives for more than two years in the wild. It's that time again. We just learned about a new plant. So go ahead and tell us what you think in the comment section below. The word of the day. Today's word is ramification. It is spelled R-A-M-I-F-I-C-A-T-I-O-N. It is a noun. It means a complex or unwelcome consequence of an action or event. Ramification. Our next word is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode. That word is rhetoric. It's a noun. It means the art of effective or persuasive speaking or writing, especially the exploitation of figures of speech and other compositional techniques. Rhetoric. Hola, Discovery Learners. So, y'all, do my estra Liz. Hi, Discovery Learners. It is I, your teacher, Liz. Aquí es su palabra en español de la semana. What that means is, here is your Spanish word of the week. La palabra de la semana es caminar. 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 Which means, walk. Caminar. Walk. Caminar. Walk. You can use this word in a phrase. Vamos a caminar. Vamos a caminar. Vamos a caminar. Which means, let's go for a walk. Vamos a caminar. Let's go for a walk. Vamos a caminar. Let's go for a walk. 
Go ahead and practice speaking Spanish all week long by saying, Vamos a caminar, which means, let's go for a walk. ¿Cómo se dice walk en español? How do you say walk in Spanish? Caminar. Sí, muy bien. Yes, very good. Hasta luego, Discovery Learners. Be sure to tune in next Monday as we learn a new Spanish word of the week here on Ability to Learn. Hey, Discovery Learners, it's me, Andrew Lancaster, here with a fun new list of Christmas comedy classics to watch this week. First up is Fred Claus. This is a comedy from 2007. It has a rating of PG and a 1 hour and 56 minute runtime. It stars Rachel Weiss, Elizabeth Banks, Paul Giamatti as Santa Claus, and Vince Vaughn as Fred Claus. And it's available on HBO Max. Next up on the reel is I'll Be Home for Christmas. This 1998 family comedy has a rating of PG. It stars Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Jessica Biel, and Gary Cole. It has a 1 hour and 26 minute runtime. It can be found on Disney+. Plus. Next up on the reel is The Santa Claus. This film comes all the way from 1994. It has a rating of PG and a 1 hour and 47 minute runtime. It stars Eric Lloyd, David Krumholtz, Peter Boyle, and Tim Allen as The Santa Claus. You can find this one on Disney+. Plus. And this week's festive Christmas work of art is Jingle Jangle. This 2020 musical has a rating of PG, a 2 hour and 2 minute runtime, and was directed by David Talbert. Choreography by Ashley Wallen and stars Forrest Whitaker, Keegan-Michael Key, Felicia Rashad, and Ricky Martin. And you can find it on Netflix. Jingle Jangle. This is a newer classic, but it boasts an amazing cast from well-known actors all the way to up-and-comers. Nowhere in this film can you look or listen and not find a star. As I'm sure you know by now, I'm a huge fan of musicals, and this is a true musical that flows seamlessly between song and speeches. Not a single frame is wasted, from the beautiful scenery and set design to the bright and colorful pageantry that went into the production. But here is what sets Jingle Jangle aside from most musicals. While the music is spectacular and expertly delivered by some of the greatest stars, like Forrest Whitaker and Felicia Rashad, but it's the choreography that takes the stage, as it uses the set pieces and designs to its advantage and makes you want to get up and dance along, helping this film jingle and jangle its way all the way up to a cinematic work of art. Now playing at the Discovery Theater this Friday, starting at 1 p.m. know what that song means. It means we reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun, and I hope you had fun too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, or to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified about all the fun we're having at Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day Program. This is Teacher Liz signing out. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I will see you next time.